good morning and power. And look who has shown up. <laughs> look who's here. <laughs> Not only are you here, you know, that's my, you know, that's everybody. Like, hey, Megan, right? I mean, this is my, right? That's my seat. I'm in it but, today, Paul. But Regina, in true form, has come in and, and taken. How that's are you? Right. I'm great. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks so much for coming. Oh, my gosh. So you were at dinner last night. With, I was. With, with Andy some... Hall, our, our beautiful Andy Hall and David McLennan. And? Love those guys. And we were at your one of your favorite spots, Capitol ah. Grill. Gotta love Capitol <laughs> Grill. Gotta love Capitol Grill. Steak or, steak or seafood? Sea bass for me. There you go. You know. There you go. Yeah. I'm just so thrilled to be here, Paul. I just want to thank you for having me this morning and really for partnering with me to bring this program forward. I'm excited. This is so exciting. You know, we've been talking about um, bringing some kind of an assessment alive. Yes. And, and I know there's lots of folks who are maybe Briggs Myers or Disc or there's there's Strength yeah. Finder. There's a bunch there's of them. There's a bunch. But when you turned me on to this work mm -hmm. and I went through it, I thought, this stands out. There's some, there's there's something different ab about this. What got you interested in like emotional intelligence? Have you have you always been like when did you what was your introduction to kind of EQ? Well, I've always been interested in emotions. I know that's not always popular. But because I've always been aware of my own emotions, you know, I'm a wear my heart on the sleeve kind of gal and that's neither good nor bad. It just is. And I think that when I look back as a kid, Paul, I was very emotional. I was at the mercy of my emotions. I mean, I was terribly shy. I cried easily. Wow. If my mother left my side, I had a complete breakdown. <laughs> I mean, my poor dad didn't really? even know what to do. And so I just was always in this emotional space. And then a couple of things happened that really sort of changed that direction. First, when I was in middle school, I met a girl named Tamika and she mm. and I became fast friends. And that relationship looking back was the catalyst to helping me break out of my shyness. And then the second thing that happened was on September 8th, 1986, when Oprah Winfrey went national. Mm. And that was just four days before my 12th birthday. I grew up watching Oprah. And here's what I noticed right away. Mm. She had a way with people. Yeah. And I wanted to have a way with people. And I said, that's who I want to be, that type of temperament, that type of personality. And so when looking back, we know it's obvious Oprah had and still does a very high level of emotional intelligence. Mm. And I think that human behavior and emotions has just always been a part of my interest. That's what attracted me to DISC, by the way. I've always just loved human behavior and studying that. Well, you know, for me, some of you know my story, um, you know, growing up in an abusive home. Yeah. I never realized how that retards your e emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, because I I never developed a full spectrum of emotions, right? Yeah. I, I got stuck on the fear side of, of that. And then when you're in that environment, almost as a survival mechanism, you develop the skill to use your emotions to manipulate conditions and circumstances. And that's so true. It, it really is. Yeah, and I love that you're talking about your story because our conditioning and our upbringing play such a big part of our emotional repertoire yeah. and how we show up in the world and engage with other people. And see, I started kind of, my personal growth journey started in forgiveness where most people start mm. with like, you know, goal setting or something like that. I sat down with Dr. Lee and his first question to me is I was kind of just telling him what, you know, yeah. where I was stuck in life. He said, who do you need to forgive? And I was like, you know, that's not <laughs> what I'm here for, but I knew exactly what he meant. Yeah. And, you know, this was, this would have been early 1990. So EQ wasn't a thing. Right. right? It wasn't. It, right. But, but he was taking me through that work. So we are really excited to bring an EQ program and project forward into the Empower yes. Living community. Um, so how do we start? How do we have this important conversation around emotion intelligence with other people and you know, with ourselves and how do people and many of our community will want to bring this to their clients? How does that start? I think, Paul, doing what we're doing today, uh, that's how we get the conversation going, introducing these ideas. And I think that most people are familiar with the concept of emotional intelligence. I think where the gap exists is between being familiar with emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and being able to apply it in your life. And when we can share things the way that you and I are now, you and I are now, when we can do this today and really share with people the benefits, 
and how transformative it can be when we develop a greater sense of our own emotional awareness, our own emotional programming and conditioning. Oh my gosh, I think people are gonna to wanna to know more and this is where something exciting starts to happen. So as, as somebody learns the, the concepts mm -hmm. or, or the pillars of, of, of emotional intelligence, obviously you have to develop the dexterity of the tool. You, yeah. have, to, you have to, it's, I think what happens is, is everybody who, who looks at emotional intelligence, and by the way, there's gonna be a link here in the comments. Uh, Regina is gonna be leading a 90 minute, it's complimentary, workshop as an if, if if you think you know what EQ is or <laughs> you know a little bit about it enough to know I know what emotional is I know what intelligence is and I think I know what the two mean you probably don't yeah. um I it, was surprised by how many things I didn't recognize uh, yeah. and I didn't know would, and this is something that I I love to learn about I've been a student of all of this I was really surprised Paul yeah me too mm -hmm. and and when I well when I took the class because mm -hmm. you know Regina's taught me and, and my team and my team has gone through it all. Um, I, 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 I think if it's been, I don't know, a year since you've really looked at what emotional intelligence is and how it can serve you so that you can serve other people and then how you can serve other people so they can serve at a higher level, come sign up, register. But when you when you start, I think the journey here is is you get into it and it you find it interesting. It's yeah. fascinating. It right? is whenever, so fascinating. Whenever you learn something about yourself, it's fascinating. Then you begin to think, okay, how how do I integrate it? And that requires practice. So we we think about the word practice. How does somebody practice emotional intelligence? That's so good, Paul, because life is our playing field. Life yeah. is how we practice. And I think one of those first steps is observing other people's emotions. Let me share this story with you. So Roger and I traveled a couple of times over the holidays, and we all know how horrific holiday yeah. travel can yeah. be, right? We traveled from our home in Atlanta to see you here in Florida. Went home a week later, traveled from Atlanta to Vegas and, and back home. And this is almost like a tale of two different emotional approaches to life. Uh, yeah, we have the guy here in, in Palm Beach at the airport, gentleman working at the gate. Yeah. He was the loveliest person, Paul. He had an attitude and a spirit. Now, everybody's sort of exhausted and stressed out. The plane's leaving late. And the gentleman making the announcements was one of the warmest people. It was truly remarkable. Roger and I even went over to him to, to thank him for his attitude during wow. this stressful holiday right time. On. And he was just greeted everybody with a smile. You fast forward to us leaving Las Vegas <laughs> two days before New Year's. And of course the gate is packed. The flight is 90 minutes late. We're all getting on the plane and the flight attendant says something unreal. She says, as everybody's getting on the plane 90 minutes late, it's late at night. Yeah. We're not gonna get back to the East Coast until two. She says, if you all will hurry and take your seats, please move out of the aisle. Please put your bags away fast. We are trying to get all of you back to Atlanta tonight. Yeah. I'm sitting there yeah. and I'm, cause I was already seated when she says this, the eyes were rolling, Paul. People were making comments underneath the mask. You could hear yeah, the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it made that. a bad situation worse. And I thought about these two different scenarios as holiday travelers, we experience a great deal of stress and frustration as do the airline people. And I was just glad that they showed up, right? Yeah. But at the same time, we had two people in stressful positions approaching those positions differently. And I think to myself, if that flight attendant only knew a little more about emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. she might have approached that stressful situation and all of us a little differently. That is yeah. so good. You know, before we get too kind of far ahead, we, we're talking about yeah. emotional intelligence. Um, talk about... Uh, what are some of the skills maybe that make up emotional intelligence? You, you say the playing field is, is the yeah. is, is the life. What are, what are the benefits? What am I going to walk away with as a benefit? Oh my gosh, Paul, the first benefit, and this may fly a little under the radar for most people. The first benefit is really how much power to control your emotions that we have. Because many of us are highly reactive. And we feel like we are controlled by the conditions and circumstances around us. And that, of course, I'm going to be stressed out because it's the holiday. Of course, I'm going to be. That's not really the case. And that's the first eye-opening benefit. Okay. It's mind-blowing because people walk away with the feeling and the, and the knowledge now that they do have control over their emotions. We almost set ourselves up for failure in that, don't we? We do, because we think, of course this is stressful. Anybody would react that way. That guy cut me off in traffic. Of course I'm... 
And it's on and on and on. And it's a chain reaction. We think our, of events. We think our emotional response That's right. is, is logical. And anybody, anybody, but no, not anybody would act that. Not That's everybody exactly acts right. It. And that is the first and probably biggest, greatest benefit of emotional intelligence is the, is the knowledge. It's the awareness. Mm. I am truly mm. in charge of my emotions. I am not at the mercy of, of them. And I'm not at the mercy of yours either. Mm. I can dictate how I choose to respond, how I choose to respond to this situation. That is so good. Yeah. So why EQ now? Like, um, mm. you know, because this body of work started years ago, I it think, did. right? Mm -hmm. I, I, when did the, when was, I don't even remember when the first kind oh of my EQ gosh. book came out. It had been mid-90s, I would imagine. It was. So, Daniel Goldman yeah. wrote a book on EQ. He was a he was a little science reporter at the New York Times. And he comes across this article in this very obscure journal. And it talks all about emotional intelligence. And he was onto something. And now years later, he's known really as the as the godfather, if you will, yeah. of emotional intelligence. Well, yeah. it's funny because if we look at just today's culture, right? It is almost like our lack of emotional intelligence is what drives our our TV, right? Right. Like we, we watch all these, you know, uh, they have these these uh, kind of TV shows where they're putting people in stressful situations <laughs> because they want them to blow up. Right. Reality That's TV right. shows, right? And and so we I love watching reality TV. Yeah. By the way, just for that. Yeah, absolutely. Just for that. And I'm always sort of it's like the just... more dysfunctional they are, the better the viewing, right? It's like you can't you can't turn away from yeah, the train, it's wreck. A train wreck. <laughs> so. I mean, why, why, why would somebody who's a coach or a, a trainer, mm -hmm. why would they want to kind of integrate EQ into their body of work, like right now? Where do, why do you think that there's such a, such a need? Oh my! Uh, I, I mean, I know certainly the pandemic has kind of put people under a lot of stress. I mean, look, Paul, look at what we've been through over the last couple of years. I mean, this COVID nineteen came into our lives, and nothing's been the same. And at first, if you think about that first span of time in COVID, I think our stress was fairly twofold. First, it was this whole notion that workplaces were closed, schools were closed, yeah. restaurants, events all over the world were being canceled, and we were being told to shelter in place. Now that's one of the most abnormal things. It was this new reality that we were all experiencing, we were all experiencing and going through this together. And then the stress came about Okay, the health aspect, would I get it? Would my loved ones get it? How many lives would be lost? And that whole thing of going through COVID-19, it really puts your emotions on high alert and it really maxes out our coping skills. And so right mm -hmm. now is absolutely the time for EQ because if you think about the last couple of years and also Paul, EQ is really starting to catch on with leaders and organizations because that future workplace is demanding that emotional intelligence be front and center. You know, Paul's prediction, I think in the next, I don't know, 18 to 36 months, I think one of the big conversations we're gonna have in our society is around COVID shame. Yes. Because I know people who got COVID and they were ashamed that they got it. Wow. Like they had done something wrong that, you know, they didn't, they didn't do something right. And we're right. probably all going to have it before it's over. I mean, I don't know how you not get it, <laughs> right. right? I mean, I don't know how you not get it. Um, so I think that that's a big thing. And I think as we see employers, you talk about leaders. Yes. Leaders are now trying to get people to come back to the office. And those people who are coming back are not the same people that left. They are not. They are not they the are same not. people. Our, we are on emotional high alert. You bet. And our coping skills have just been pressed so hard that this coming back together, even those who stay remotely, those who come back into the office, Paul, those challenges are just going to require emotional intelligence. And let me tell you the article that I read the other day on a blog. This yeah. is so fascinating. The new mayor of New York City, Mayor mm -hmm. Eric Adams. Adams. He, there was a great article in the New York Times about him. Did you know that the number one criterion that he looks for in his top officials is emotional intelligence? Is that right? That is right. He ranks that higher than academic achievement and government experience which is probably the right thing to do yeah, in that case. Sure, right, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I was going to ask you because I think what happens is, is if you think about, let's just take, you know, 
uh, you know, I, I watch financial news, right? And so I'm watching how JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs mm -hmm. are, are trying to get their, their teams yeah. back. And now what they're realizing is, okay, you know, five years ago, we hired Jim or Mary. Yeah. And we hired them for their intellect, right? They were really smart mm -hmm. people. And now they're watching really smart people come back from a really stressful thing. And they don't have, there's a, there's a gap. There's a function gap between their intelligence and their emotional, their IQ and their EQ. That's right. And so talk is, can you just- And speak? we saw a drop, Paul. There's a wonderful nonprofit organization called Six Seconds, and they've been studying uh, emotional intelligence around the globe for over a decade now. Huh. And coming out of the pandemic, there's some data, very real information about the overall global EQ scores dropping. And three areas in particular saw the biggest decline in EQ scores. Number three being imagination. Oh, wow. Number two being risk tolerance. And the number one declined EQ score in 2020 was in collaboration. I mean, you talk about, give me three things that guarantee success, right? Collaboration, right? right? I mean, there they are. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and so there are new challenges and those new challenges can be addressed with emotional intelligence. We have to provide for our employees, for our colleagues, for our family and our friends, a way, a new way of coping, yeah. a new way of coping. There's gotta be another intelligence on the table besides academic. Now that is not to say that Mayor Eric Adams and other leaders are not looking for qualified people. They are. Right. The candidates in front of them, Paul, have already been vetted for their, for their experience. Yeah, right. But all things being equal, they're going to choose the person that has the most emotional intelligence to bring into their organizations. Why? Because the future of work will demand that. Because we have been through something and our minds, again, emotional high alert. And we are emotionally reacting to so many things now uh, than, than ever before. COVID and the stress of life have really put some new challenges in front of us. So talk to us about um, what we're going to be doing uh, at this 90 minute workshop. First off, what are we going to, as a result of somebody signing up, mm -hmm. it's absolutely free, yes. complimentary, and you can bring your entire team, bring whoever you bring like. Bring everybody. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you, I mean, you don't want to grow alone and you want people around you to have this, this same level of awareness you do. What, what would be three things that somebody will, you know, as a result of spending 90 minutes of their life with you in this training, what will they walk away with a better understanding or a skill or a resource yeah. or a tool? That's, that's a great give question. Three. Well, the first one I can give you, Paul, is deeper self-awareness. Now, a lot of people think they know themselves, but if the last couple of years have taught us anything is maybe we don't know ourselves the way that we thought. And all transformation starts with itself. That's right. And this is key for emotional intelligence because the better I know myself, the better I can know and relate to you. And when I can identify, this has been studied, when I can name and identify my emotions, I can deal with them better than when I can't name them and identify them. Yeah. How huge is that to be able to call anger, anger, frustration, frustration, jealousy, whatever we're feeling to really label it properly wow. because that goes a long way into being able to diffuse it and cope with it. And I think the second thing are our collaboration skills go up. Oh my gosh, our interpersonal relationships. And I think one of my personal things that I've gotten from EQ Paul is a calm confidence. And I say that and again, that's another one of those that. things that's gonna fly under the radar for a lot of people because I know myself. Mm -hmm. That self-recognition, that self-awareness, that's the first piece that we're gonna start talking about in this class. That's because it's priority. I can't manage myself well. I can't develop a great relationship with you if I don't know who I am, if I don't know my strengths and weaknesses, if I don't have my emotional triggers. I mean, wouldn't it be great to understand what your emotional mm. triggers are? Yeah, that is something we're gonna dive into in, in the 90 minute class. One of my favorite books is As Man Thinketh. And perhaps my favorite chapter of all time of almost anything mm -hmm. written is the chapter on serenity. And he starts with calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom, right? It's an indication of a more ripened understanding of the laws of our being. Right. And that's really what EQ is. It really is. You know, there's lots of people, and I know like, you are you are a master at DISC certification. <laughs> I love DISC. You're, you're a faculty leader mm -hmm. in, in DISC in, in a large organization. You've trained, I don't know, thousands of people. My understanding, and you can polish me up, is you know, DISC is a really powerful tool 
but EQ allows you to take somebody once they understand or can identify kind of the motivating behaviors. So great, I can understand what might motivate a behavior, right. but do I understand the behavior, do I label the behavior right? Right. right. And labeling then, it will help you deal with it effectively. Right. Then if I can if I can name the problem, mm -hmm. then I can access the tools and resources to change it. So it allows somebody who is DISC certified to then take that client. Because once, okay, great. Now, now, okay, I, 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 I know that I'm a D or I know I'm right. an SSC or an I or whatever that is. So how do I fix that? How do I how do I fix where I might be weak or where I need to? That's right. How do you leverage it's that? It's an emotional fix, isn't it? It is. It's not it's, an intellectual fix. That's exactly right. How do you leverage who you are and your emotions to bring out the best yeah, in yourself and I, other people? The, the mistake I see is somebody says, "Okay, well, you know, on 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 disc, you're a D, so we're going to give you, you know, a communication right. skills." Well, teaching me how to communicate when I when I don't communicate well and teaching me more tools to communicate, but not changing that that, that driving force, that understanding. Right. You know, it, it's like, you know, somebody somebody who's going in the wrong direction, buying a tank of gas so they can get there faster. <laughs> doesn't right. really help you. That's you know, right. So, you and know, with the, EQ, we start at the beginning, Paul. Yeah. I mean, that is so cool and so key what you're saying because EQ, if we're defining it, at its core, it's the practice of recognizing and understanding one's own emotions, the emotions of others, and using that awareness to effectively manage one's behavior and relationships. Oh, I love that. That is how we break down EQ. And those are the skills that we're gonna dive deep into. Those are the mindset and how we're gonna frame getting better at handling ourselves and others. Is there anything about EQ that that isn't valuable in our lives. Our whole life is built around our relationships. Our whole lives are built around our emotions. Wouldn't it make sense to get better at that? Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. it make sense to get better at that? Yeah. That's what the 90 minute class, that's the starting point. That's the safe, easy next step. Well, I know for this, you know, I now have a four year old and a six year old <laughs> and little Caleb who you met is he's just, in a, he's, he's, he's so, so sweet, and, but he's so tender. His emotions, you're talking about wearing your emotions mm -hmm. in your sleep. And so we we now understand that, okay, we need to really, we need to deal with him with kid glove care, that he he's a very emotional kid. And that, you know, I- And if you're a parent, like you are now, Paul, how valuable is it to oh know that? I Because I could crush that kid. You could. I could crush, I could break, I could, in trying to discipline him, mm -hmm. I could break his spirit. And oh my goodness, I don't want to do that. And I could do it with just a look sometimes. And so I've learned, wow, when I'm dealing, as particularly with Caleb, yeah. you know, Emerson, <laughs> Emerson might take me out. But, but Caleb, you know, I, I know I've got to, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to approach him with the with the sensitivity. So look, here's what here's what we'd like you to do: click on the link below, register for this, block the time off. Block the time off for 90 minutes. We're gonna have Q&A also. So oh, bring your questions awesome. so that we can talk about what challenges and what observations you're having in your own life. Because I don't know of anything more important than learning how to handle myself and how to take care and handle my relationships. Yeah. I don't know anything more important. That drives everything else in our lives. And all of us wanna bring our best forward. Yeah. And my belief is that begins with emotional intelligence. It's, absolutely, you know, everybody says, you know, you wanna be a relational leader, you wanna be a relational you know, person. Well, that starts it with EQ, it really does. And so click on the link below, register. I'll see you there, Regina will see you there. It's gonna be a great, it's gonna be a great time. So thank you. Thank this is you, fun. Paul. I cannot, I cannot wait. I can't wait and I cannot wait to see all of you there. Thank y'all. Cheers. Do well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.